Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Gianna Triano from CyberSource and I'll be your moderator. Real quick, please note our general disclaimer in regard to forward-looking statements is just one of those necessary items we need to share with you. We'll be moving on to today's presentation and we'll cover topics including payment management trends, CRM technology and trends, the connected payment engagement system, and we'll have a solution demo from Acromobile, and we'll be closing off with our Q&A. And our presenters today include Paul Williamson. Paul is our VP of Sales for CyberSource North America and is responsible for sales, customer success, sales engineering, and channel business that includes our technology, system integrator, and reseller partners. Paul joined us from Salesforce.com, where he was Vice President of Sales for their mid-market business and has held various senior positions within the mobile, wireless POS, and payments industries within the restaurant and hospitality industry with leading innovator Palm Tech Limited. And we have Tony Parrison, whom has been with Salesforce for over nine years and is currently a Director of Product Management in the platform organization. Tony's extensive background in product management and consulting includes roles at PeopleSoft and the formerly known Anderson Consulting, now known as Accenture, with a focus on enterprise solutions. And Jason Mascarelli, the founder and head of sales at Acromobile, a customer engagement software platform that helps companies improve customer experiences to drive revenue. Jason has been working as a Salesforce.com partner for 14 years, leading teams which have helped over 1,000 Salesforce.com customers. I'll turn this over to Paul Williamson. Thanks, Gianna. Good morning, everyone. The digital economy is disruptive. It's creating new opportunities and challenges within virtually every industry segment. In fact, in a great number of industries, it's leveled the playing field and given rise to exciting new companies that approach the delivery of traditional technology products and services in a unique and exciting new ways. Two great examples of this are Uber and Airbnb. These two companies have leveraged the digital economy to redefine their industries and set new standards within the transport and accommodation segments. These companies view payment as more than just a utility. For them, payment is intertwined with the innovation and growth, and it's woven into the fabric of the brand experience itself. Let's explore some of these payment innovations in the digital economy and see how they are enhancing the overall brand experience. Innovations within mobile and cloud technologies are creating new cross-channel and embedded commerce experiences like in-app payments, endless aisle, and virtual merchandising. For example, just a few years ago, apps found on things like the App Store and uh, Google Play largely started out as simply delivering information. But today, these apps drive transactions and payments through the delivery of incremental services and features. One of the most innovative industries to capture this growth has been the mobile gaming industry, where companies like King.com, makers of the game Candy Crush, explode onto the scene and launch themselves onto a new stock exchange with billion dollar valuations. Face-to-face -face channels are also now evolving to be more flexible and service oriented. Major retailers such as Nordstrom's are, make, are now arming their sales associates in their retail stores with mobile POS solutions in an effort to make checkout more convenient for consumers and as a result is getting their service staff out from behind the counter and onto the retail floor, interacting directly with the consumer. As you might expect, a lot of the innovation around payments is being driven by retailers like Nordstrom's, Starbucks, Walgreens, and by other consumer-facing businesses or companies like Uber and Airbnb that we mentioned before. As you might expect, a lot of that uh, uh, innovation has actually disrupted traditional industries, and then more are actually being impacted by that change. For example, mobile POS devices are now being used in the field of uh, insurance and other big industries to make things more convenient for consumers and to increase sales interaction. All of these new channels offer many new and exciting ways to engage um, with your clients, but this also presents both exciting opportunities as well as many challenges. Here at CyberSource, we recognize that not all companies uh, have the hundreds of people or millions of dollars to spend on innovation that you may want to meet your customers' needs, where they're buying and exceed also the customer expectations, but not have to deal with the complexities that come with that. Enabling more channels, adding more devices or platforms, and maintaining security of your customers' private data at each of these touch points and throughout that network, all while integrating with back-end systems, presents a lot of challenges for businesses today. 
in the past, this has forced companies to work with dozens of different hardware, software, and even middleware providers, which is why you've often only seen innovation at the top end of town. With that in mind, CyberSource has spent the last 20 years innovating in the delivery of the most robust set of payment enablement solutions available today. In fact, one in every $4 spent online here in the United States is actually pushed through the CyberSource platforms today. As a result of that, we're working to deliver a unique set of technology so that first of all we can enhance customer engagement through mobile technology by delivering seamless cross-channel experience and frictionless checkout. Secondly, we're there to protect you against risk. We're offering protection from your, for your payment data as well as protection against fraud, often seen by some of the big challenges that even some of the major retailers have experienced in the last, little, uh, last few months. And we're also here to improve enterprise integration capabilities with back-end systems and solutions like Salesforce.com, which is why we've got these guys on the phone today. And now I'd like to hand it over to Tony from Salesforce, and he can talk about uh, their solutions. Great. Thanks, Paul. You know, as we have seen, as Paul mentioned, recent trends are changing the way you engage with your customers. The rise of mobile and social has had a huge impact on the way customers and companies interact with each other. And this has led leads to more touch points and more opportunities that you have with your customer to drive new business or add on to existing business or provide a, a better customer experience. And with more frequent and more personal customer engagement, you now have more ways to grow your business and strengthen existing customer relationships. But what about the transaction? You know, customer engagements are often about a new or recent business transaction. You're creating new orders for new sales, or you're talking to your customers about orders that they have placed, or your customers are calling in to inquire about the status of a past order. Where do you look to find the details of those transactions? You know, the products that were ordered, the status, and so on. There's a major disconnect if the transaction activity is separated from the CRM system you use to manage your customer relationships. If you're not storing your transactional information in your CRM system, you end up with a, a lack of visibility. You have an incomplete picture of your customer because you don't have access to all of the recent sales for a customer. And at the end of the day, that means you can't provide a good customer experience. And with all of the new touch points that are available for customers, and with the rise of mobile and social, it becomes more important than ever to make sure that every customer engagement is handled successfully. And also, without transactions in your CRM system, the entire order to cash process becomes a challenge in Salesforce because until recently, there was no order or no cash in Salesforce. But today we'll see how Salesforce orders combined with Acromobile payments solves that problem and enables the full order to cash process on the force.com platform. So in spring 14 earlier this year, we introduced Salesforce orders as a place for you to store orders in Salesforce. Orders now connects the clouds and your enterprise. It connects the sales cloud with the service cloud. It connects your front office with your back office so that now your sales and service teams have the visibility they need about orders that your customers have placed. It allows them to easily review the history of past orders for a given customer or answer questions about existing orders. With orders and order products, you now have two new standard objects, which is a a standard place for you to store and access all of your order information, no matter how the order was placed. So whether it's coming from your sales team, working with your customers to convert an opportunity, or your customer accepted a quote, or maybe your customer went on to your e-commerce site or mobile commerce site and placed the order themselves. You now have a standard place to store all of the orders and tie them back to your customers, giving you that complete visibility you need. Orders also acts as the standard integration point to connect not only with your front-end systems, but also with your back-end systems. You can send your orders to your order fulfillment system to be processed and provisioned, or to other downstream systems like billing or financials. At the end of the day, your CRM system now provides you with a complete picture of your customer sales activity. 
With Salesforce orders, you can track the status of new and existing orders in Salesforce, giving your users the visibility they need about recent sales activity. They can drill down to see the details of the products that were ordered, including fields like quantity and price and dates, or any other information that you need at the line level for downstream processing. And you have an additional level of control over who can activate orders with enhanced user permissions. And this is important because once the order is activated, that impacts your downstream processes. So things like fulfillment and provisioning, or billing and revenue and so on, are impacted by uh, an activated order. So you want tighter controls around that process. You can also automate the sales cycle and increase the productivity of your sales teams or your sales operations teams by automatically generating orders directly from the opportunity or quote using flow. You can carry over all of the details from the opportunity line to make sure that the orders that you're place, placing directly reflect the deal that you closed with your customer. You could even further automate the process and tie this to a workflow rule so that you could have the orders automatically generated when you close the opportunity or when your customer accepts a quote. And then after you've activated an order, you can track any subsequent changes, things like credits and adjustments or returns in a separate reduction order. And a reduction order is a, a negative order that ties back to the original order, which allows you to keep the original order unchanged. And you can streamline integrations and simplify the order capture process with a powerful new composite API that lets you create the order and the order lines and any related data all in one call, simplifying the integration process. But as I mentioned earlier, in order to fully support the order to cash process in Salesforce, you need not only orders, you also need to be able to process payments. So with an integrated payment solution on the force.com platform, you could have not just an order to cash process, but a quote to cash or opportunity to cash, or really a lead to cash solution all in Salesforce. So I'll turn it over to Jason and he can introduce the new Acromobile payment solution. Hi, this is Jason Mashroli with Acromobile. Thank you, Tony. And uh, we're very excited to be here today to uh, launch Acromobile Payments. And uh, you know, first we heard about um, really some of the trends and things that are happening in the industry. We're all experiencing that in our everyday lives. And really what I want to talk about next is how do we deliver on this vision? And uh, Acromobile, Salesforce, and CyberSource have worked together over the last year to really pull together the solution to really take and deliver a um, product that provides for a fantastic payment experience, um, not only for agents uh, in the call center or field sales, uh, but also for your customers and really improving the security and um, you know, the quality of their payment experience. And so um, what we're finding today is that it's not good enough just to have a customer's data um, in the CRM system. We also need to have their payment methods in terms of their wallet. Uh, we also need to have all of their transaction information all in one central place so that we can run uh, better campaigns and uh, really get better insights in terms of customer behavior. This all comes together to really create an omni-channel experience. And omni-channel is kind of one of those hot buzzwords today that some of us may or may not know of, but basically it's multi-channel. And if you see here, uh, essentially what we're talking about is providing one integrated CRM and payment uh, platform that really allows you to tie together all of your customer touch points from your e-commerce sites through to your customer-facing apps, your field sales and service apps, even to your retail store. And a lot of this can be pulled together either by running it um, on the platform we're presenting today or easily integrating um, to uh, some of your other standalone systems like your e-commerce site and so on. And the way we do that is by bringing together your customer master into one place, the payment tokens in terms of um, that payment information um, for the customer, all of their transaction history aggregated across different systems, and then analytics um, that really provides uh, that customer 360-degree uh, view um, across the entire system. And that's all built on a world-class CRM and global processing platform. And then we can easily integrate um, using standard APIs back into um, your back-end systems for order fulfillment, billing, financials, et cetera. 
Acromobile Payments um, really is focused in two areas. The first one's on helping your team. Um, so this would be your contact center agents, your field sales and service people, even people that may be in your finance team that are using Salesforce.com for really managing the payment process. Um, it's also about uh, providing a great payment experience to your customers. Uh, because there is a huge shift that's happening um, of payments going from um, you know, analog to digital, and uh, this solution really allows you to do that. Um, the overall platform gives you um, all the payment experience uh, features you would expect um, in terms of QR code payments, um, smart links to pay, um, card on file. Um, it allows for workflow, analytics, and really leverages all the best of um, both CyberSource and Salesforce.com. So now what I'm going to do is shift into the demo, and we'll go through three, three parts. Uh, really the first is to talk about the payment process for your team, um, your own employees, how uh, they'd use the solution, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the payment experience for your customers, and then we'll wrap up with um, analytics um, in terms of dashboards and reports, and uh, then we'll um, go through a summary and move on to questions. You on the line may be very familiar with Salesforce.com, so it's going to look familiar. Um, some of you may be, um, this might be the first time you're seeing Salesforce. And so what, what I'll just highlight first off is that um, the Acromal payment solution that we're demonstrating today um, is available to existing Salesforce.com customers. Um, it can also be purchased as a standalone solution, um, even if you're not using Salesforce.com and, and get all the same features and functionality that I'm demonstrating today. So the first thing you'll see here is um, we come into the home page and I get a quick view of a chatter feed that gives me a sense of what's happening in the organization. So I'm going to get updates in terms of what's happening with orders, payments, invoices, and, and things across the enterprise. I'm also going to get a snapshot of a dashboard, which is our payments dashboard that we'll dive into at the end. Um, but it's nice that I can get a quick view in terms of what's happening um, with uh, money that's coming in the door. So I'm going to start off and go into uh, one of our customers. Uh, which is Acme. So I'm a sales person. And basically what I want to do is um, take an existing opportunity that I've got and uh, basically bring that to close. And this is a very common kind of business to business process. Um, so you can see I'm here on the account page, uh, basically get all the demographic information for my customer. I can see all the contact information, all the uh, close one and open uh, opportunities. Uh, we see the new orders um, information here um, in terms of all the orders that have been placed. Um, if we decide to um, use a system for invoicing, um, we've got invoices that are available. I'll talk about that later. And then you'll see this new section here which is talking about payments. And sorry for the window. There we go. Um, we've got uh, payments which is uh, basically giving you all the payment history um, for this customer. So you can see what contacts those are related to. Um, you can see uh, what credit cards those were paid for and uh, the amounts and, and details. So let's hop into an opportunity. Um, so I'm going to go into Acme uh, as an opportunity for selling um, a product which is our Internet of Things for, uh, for a village. And uh, I've got all the details of the opportunity. I'm at the proposal um, quote stage. And so I'll basically just close this opportunity and once I close this, you'll also notice that I already created my, uh, my products related to this. I don't have any orders here yet. Um, so what I need to do is now um, generate my order. Once I do that, uh, basically Salesforce is um, automatically taking all of my opportunity information, the relevant uh, contact and account information, and all the order line items uh, or opportunity line items, and uh, creates an order. So we hop into the order, and now I've got all those details automatically created. And I've got those line items that have been brought over. Uh, I can review my information. Now, I want to take this all the way through to payment uh, because this customer wants to move quickly. They want to get the product shipped out. And so the first thing I need to do here is uh, basically add the build to contact. And the build to contact is the person who's going to pay for this. And we're going to use um, John's credit card information. And so first, before we do that, uh, we just need to make sure we calculate the tax. Um, so we've done, we've built in tax calculation services into the platform. Uh, so we automatically um, will calculate tax. So you'll see we've, we've generated that. Um, and as I modify my order uh, line item details, um, that tax information is going to update as well. And we're able to report on all the state and local and uh, international tax details uh, in the system. So now I'm ready to get my payment. And uh, I'm going to process a payment. So as either a salesperson or a contact center agent who processes payments, um, this is a very typical process I'd go through. 
Um, just so you know, um, we can obviously integrate with orders, but as uh, Tony mentioned, uh, we can connect this whole process to any standard or custom object within Salesforce.com. So you also notice here I have an existing card on file. So John's an existing customer. He purchases from us all the time, and he typically uses a Visa card. Um, but today he's mentioned that he wants to use a new card. So I'm going to basically use a new card. And in this particular example, um, Tony is going to give me his um, card details by phone. And um, I hadn't filled in my address on his contacts. So I just need to select that information. Okay. And I know that New York is not in Illinois, but you know that's the beauty of demos. And uh, so we've got. Uh, I'm, we're going to take his new Visa card. and basically do my payment. And a couple of things I want to highlight here before I do this, which is the address was all pulled over and his email address was directly pulled in from the order and the related contacts. So the agent doesn't have to refill in that information. The other thing I want to highlight is that credit card information is never touching Acromobile. It's never touching Salesforce.com. It's securely um, being processed through CyberSource. And this is a real-time demo, and so you can see how quick that payment was um, authorized and, uh, and successfully processed. So right here, um, as, as an agent, I get a quick view of the payment status, um, all the details in terms of the transaction number and the payment amount, and then now I can go to the order. And as you'd expect on the order, um, now I have my uh, details are all updated here, and then I have um, my payment record that's been entered here against uh, the order. And if I go in and take a look at that payment detail, I now have all of the information um, that I might need to look into um, in terms of researching this transaction. And then you'll also notice that I have his card number stored. So I don't have the full card number, but I have the fact that it ends in four ones. And if I click on this payment inf method information, I can now see this is a card on file. So now that I use that new card, we actually ran the transaction, and then we took a token, and we created a payment method against John's record for future transactions. So if I look at John's contact record, I'll now see all of his available payment methods for future transactions. Okay? Now, those tokens can be used for um, any of the other customer touch points now. So let's say that um, John now um, you know, has a different relationship with us at, you know, where he gets invoiced for products. And uh, we basically want to um, have him be able to pay an invoice online. And so let's say he calls in to the contact center, and, uh, or more, more likely uh, my finance team has called out to him, said, hey, we need to get uh, paid for this particular invoice. And what's going to happen is we review the invoice details, um, these invoices could be either generated by the system or they could be integrated and pushed in um, through an integration with your backend um, systems like Oracle or SAP, um, NetSuite, so on. And uh, once those invoices are in here, um, you'll notice we generate a QR code. And that QR code is um, something that can be included in your invoice templates and included on your invoices such that um, when you're dealing with small businesses, for example, or consumers, you want to make it very easy for them to pay, they can literally just scan that QR code and it's going to take them through an easy two-step payment process um, that's automatically going to populate all the fields based on, on the related information on this invoice. The other thing I can do is I can actually send a payment request. And so a lot of times today, customers don't like to fill out um, credit card forms and, and email those in. Um, they don't want to give their credit card details by phone because fraud is such an issue today. And so one of the things that we did is, is really took some of the best practices that's happening in the industry and really made it accessible for, for every company um, that's using Salesforce or any CyberSource customer that wants to be able to just simply send a payment request to a customer. So if I say request payment, what we're going to do now is uh, we just generated an email and sent that out to the client, and now the customer can actually pay on their own. And so I'm just going to go in, so now kind of shifting roles to being a customer, and I go into my, my inbox, and you'll see that I got an email sent to me, and this is using standard email templates within Salesforce. Um, so obviously your logo would be here, and the branding and all the content that would be relevant. And then right from here, I can just go in and pay now. I'm going to get um, the summary details of my invoice. This page can be customized as well. 
And then you'll see that as an end customer, I don't have to go type in all my details. All I need to do is simply you know, put in my credit card information, and we can also set this up in a way that would allow the customer to log in and use one of those cards on file as well. Okay, so I'm just going to make my payment. And you may be wondering, okay, you know, what if the customer is on their mobile device? Um, all of these pages are responsive, and so they look great on, um, on an Android or iPhone or any smartphone, and the same process is very, very simple um, to make that payment uh, you know, through email. Okay? So we'll go back, and if I refresh this page, basically that payment record is now going to be recorded against the invoice. Um, so you can see now I've got that payment detail here. Um, my status has now been updated to paid. And so that's a really easy way for us to um, get access to uh, you know, a secure payment process for our customers. The last thing I want to show you in terms of the customer experience is now um, a payment portal. So one of the options that we've made available is an ability to, out of the box, have a fully featured uh, payment portal for your customers. Uh, which you can brand, and uh, with no coding and development, you can basically customize the look and feel, the colors, add your logo, um, you can configure the tabs. And what's interesting about this is this actually adds a social layer to uh, a payment portal. So as an end customer, I would log in. I'd be able to quickly see what are some of the new invoices that have come in. Um, if I've got questions, I can actually um, post a chatter post to um, the agent or to my salesperson. I can also send uh, messages. Um, so I can send you know, live messages and we can have a chat session um, back and forth. And now let's say I just want to go in and see my order history as a customer. And where this is great is especially in a B2B context um, where I might be doing restocking orders on a regular basis. I want to go in, see what the status of my orders are. Um, you know, and all of this can be very easily um, configured within Salesforce.com through drag and drop. So if you want to add additional details on these pages, it's very easy. And as a customer, I can basically review my order. I can approve it, and I could make a payment. Um, the last thing I want to show you is um, invoices. And so those same invoices that I was able to see, um, you know, let's say that a utility company, for example, wants to have a billing portal, or they want to integrate this into an existing portal. Their customers can come in, view their invoices, make payments, and you could push attachments in here, which would be the PDF document, and then I can see all my payment history. And then finally, I can see um, my payment methods um, and cards on file. And so if I want to add or remove um, cards on file, I can do that right from, uh, from the portal. So really, I think as you can see, this is an ideal solution for um, a lot of different business use cases and uh, for driving additional revenue. Um, we want to kind of highlight a few. So as we talk through today, we've identified a lot of ways that you could use um, an omni-channel payment solution. Um, you know, one of the ways that we're finding a lot of customers um, are coming to us looking for is cross-selling products and services. So for example, um, you know, companies that sell through a channel but might sell um, their warranties and premium support um, directly. Um, other use cases could be field service professionals. Um, so we have uh, a mobile solution um, using Salesforce One Mobile that allows for all the same things that we've demoed today um, to basically be done from uh, a mobile device. And then you also have um, online bill presentment, um, B2B commerce like we've talked about, um, improving your collections process, um, and even um, doing promotions around a single product and allowing a one-step checkout process. Um, so a lot of great ideas, and uh, you know, there's uh, many, many more here um, in terms of how you can leverage the solution. Okay, now how do we get started? And so the first step is um, you can obviously contact us. We're happy to help and, uh, and speak to any of us. Um, but the easiest way is you can go to the Salesforce.com App Exchange. So if you go to AppExchange.com, and if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's actually um, links at the bottom. Um, there's a link that uh, goes directly to App Exchange, and uh, that goes to the App Exchange listing. And then um, you can essentially install um, the App Exchange package for Acromobile Payments. Um, there's a very simple um, setup process to link your CyberSource account. Um, if you don't have a CyberSource account, um, you'll get instructions emailed to you in terms of how to contact um, your CyberSource rep to get that started. Then you can start transacting. And then if you've got questions or you want to reach out to us for additional ideas on how to extend the solution, um, we're here to help. 
Um, we've really architected and built this in a way that is very easy to get using the solution. However, it's very flexible in the sense that if you want to work with a Salesforce integration company or an IT services vendor that's going to go extend this and integrate it deeply within your business processes, um, it can adapt to those things as well. So that wraps up uh, my part of the presentation, the demo, and I'll turn it back over to Gianna. Great. Thank you so much, Jason. That was an excellent demo. We'll now go into our Q&A session, and we do have many questions that came in, so we'll do our best to cover as many as possible. Uh, just so you know, there will be some contact details available to get further answers if need be, um, if we're unable to get to your questions here uh, today. However, I would like to go ahead and our first question is for Jason. Is any credit card data stored in Acromobile or Salesforce.com systems? Uh, good question. So we want to make sure that uh, this is a secure solution and that was really why we partnered with CyberSource. And so no, uh, there is no credit card data stored within Acromobile or in Salesforce. And actually Acromobile is built completely on the Salesforce platform. So um, there's uh, Acromobile doesn't store anything. It's completely stored within Salesforce.com. Um, however, the credit card data is uh, never touching our systems. Great. Thank you, Jason. And our next question is for Paul. I am a CyberSource customer using their tokenization services. Does the Acromobile solution work with other CyberSource tokens I am already using? Yeah, thanks, Jana. That's a great question. So, uh, actually, yes. So, within uh, the same MIDs that you've got actually created inside your CyberSource solution today, um, tokens that are actually created on the Acro Mobile uh, solution side can be used uh, through the CyberSource integration. So, you can be using, you know, our API tools like Secure Acceptance and things like that already. So, uh, again, our tokenization tools are fully integrated with theirs, and any new credit card that's actually created or uh, deposited inside the Acrom mobile solution will actually then get brought across and be tokenized on the uh, on the Cybersource side. So you're protected uh, on, on both sides no matter where that, uh, that credit card data is actually entered. Thank you, Paul. And back to Jason real quick. What if the card is declined? What will happen? What will you see? Do you have to log into Cybersource separately to investigate that? No, you don't. So that information that um, in terms of the transaction, um, so of course the one that we demoed was a, a successful one, um, but if it was a decline, um, that information would show on that first screen that I, I demonstrated, and then that decline information would also be available um, right within um, the Salesforce object um, that you're connected to. So for example, if it's orders, I would say payment declined, and then um, you'd be able to contact the customer um, for a different card and uh, use one of the other payment approaches. Great. Thank you, Jason. And here's a question for Tony of Salesforce. I already track products on my opportunities. Why do I need an order? What's the difference between a closed opportunity and an order? Thanks, Jenna. That's a, that's a good question. When we introduced Salesforce orders earlier this year, uh, there was a question that was raised by a number of our customers. On uh, There's actually a success community site where uh, – Customers can talk and, and raise questions to each other. And a number of people asked why track orders separate from opportunities. And really, it emerged that it's the best practice to store them separately. Uh, they each have a different purpose, and, a, and importantly, they have a different life cycle. So with opportunities, you're using that to manage your pipeline. You're using it for forecasting. Whereas for orders, you're using that for fulfillment and provisioning and other downstream processes like you know, billing and payments and so forth. Um, another, another reason is that you don't want to overload your opportunity with unrelated information. So it, if it's I, pieces of information that you need for fulfillment or provisioning, you want to track that separately. And also you may want to create multiple orders from a single opportunity. And so that would be another reason why you would want to have the, the order separate from the opportunity. And, and then the order becomes the actual sales that were, uh, were closed for the customer and you have the the actual information stored separately. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Tony. And a uh, question for Paul. If I am already using Secure Acceptance, can I use my existing SA profile with the Acromobile solution? 
Yeah, thanks, Gianna. So, uh, yes, if you're actually already using secure acceptance uh, on uh, the CyberSource side, um, you'll actually um, have a CyberSource merchant ID can actually support multiple profiles. So in this instance, we would actually create a new profile specifically for the uh, Acro Mobile tool. Um, the existing profiles will continue to work, so this will just be another one that you essentially add to the existing profiles. And the Acro Mobile team will actually be able to provide you with all the documentation, listing the steps so that you can go through creating that CyberSource merchant ID directly inside their application. They've got a great tool guide and getting started guide that can really help people get started really quickly. So absolutely, yes, you can take advantage of all the features that are part of uh, our existing secure acceptance platform. Great. Thanks so much, Paul. Uh, another question for Jason. Who enters the credit card information? So you really have a lot of options here. So the credit card information can be entered by a call center agent or you know, any, of, any of your staff that uh, take the, the credit card by phone. Um, or um, for any of the objects that we can connect to, um, they have the option to um, send the request payment link to the customer. Um, and currently that's by email, and in the future that will be by SMS as well. Um, so you can either have the, your employees collect that credit card information and process the payment, or you can push that back to the customer, which is actually a much more secure and, and better process um, to do. I mean, in the last example that uh, we talked to was um, they could go to the payment portal and log in, and uh, the customer can self-serve and uh, make their payment there as well. Great. Thanks again, Jason. And uh, another question, I believe that this applies to Salesforce and is for Tony. Do I need to use contracts with orders? I uh, know you can have orders directly related to an account, uh, and then you have the option to relate orders to contracts as well. Um, if you do tie the order to a contract, you can default things onto the order automatically and enforce some rules like having the order come from the same price book or match the same currency as the contract. And then if you set up, uh, if the contract represents perhaps a, a subscription, you may have a start date and an end date. And then you can verify and validate that all of the order dates fall within the range of your contract. So you have some additional flexibility uh, or enhancements with uh, tying it to a contract, but you can also tie it directly to an account. It, it also works with the person account uh, concept in Salesforce as well. Great. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Paul, here's a question for you. Can a merchant use a credit card processor that is partnered with CyberSource? Yeah, thanks, Gianna. So if you've got an existing acquiring relationship already, uh, absolutely. So you can retain the bank that you're actually doing your acquiring with today, um, and then you're just essentially using CyberSource as that gateway connectivity tool that will then give you that advantage of actually then connecting not only into the CyberSource platform and therefore uh, into Salesforce as well as into the Acro Mobile platform, but also by doing that, you'll also be able to take advantage of all the ad additional tools that we provide here at CyberSource. So we actually provide as we mentioned here, the tokenization services. We've also got fraud cap capabilities, managed risk, and a whole bunch of other tools that you can also take advantage of. So the great thing is no change in the existing acquiring bank that you've got. You can just take advantage of the gateway services and all of the other platform tools that we've, uh, we've mentioned here by, uh, by uh, implementing uh, with, uh, with CyberSource, Acromobile, and Salesforce. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. Uh, next question for Jason. Can I use this if I do not have Salesforce.com? Yes, you can. Uh, so you can still go to App Exchange and install this um, as a um, – you'll get a 30-day trial um, org, and you'll get all of the tabs that you saw that uh, we demonstrated today. Um, so you'll have accounts, contacts, orders, invoices, and all the payment processing capability that's there. Um, and you can certainly contact us, and we'll, we'll help you with the setup and, uh, and getting up and running. Great. Another question for you, Paul. Uh, for stored credit card info, who houses it and thus needs to maintain the appropriate FAQ level? Great question, Gianna. So uh, uh, similar to like the tokenization, so all of the credit card data will be managed and maintained on the CyberSource side. That's the, uh, the core part of the, the functionality that we provide um, for, uh, for the industry. So uh, we will be securing and tokenizing all of that data, as uh, we talked about before. Any data, again, that's entered either through Salesforce or through the Acro Mobile uh, App Exchange solution uh, will actually be managed and tokenized. So all of that data will be maintained from a compliance standpoint point on the cyber sources platform that we've been doing obviously for the last 20 plus years. Excellent. Thank you so much, Paul. And another question for Tony. Can I submit orders for approval? Yes, you can use the uh, orders has the access to the same standard workflow and approval 
tool that the other objects in Salesforce use. So depending on how you are creating your orders, whether you're using a quoting process or not, um, you could have a draft order created uh, by your sales team or your sales operations team and then have that reviewed uh, by other folks in your organization to ensure that the appropriate product rules have been met and the pricing is approved and so forth. And then after the order has been approved, you could then change that to activated uh, with, by a person who has the appropriate permissions, and that would then indicate that it's ready to be fulfilled and sent for downstream processing and for payment uh, as well. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, let's see our next question uh, for Jason. How do I perform credits or refunds? Uh, so credits and refunds are not currently supported in the product. We're actually um, putting that into our next release for Q4. Um, so you'll be able to actually uh, run um, your, your credits and uh, refunds uh, right from within the product. Great. Another question for uh, you, Tony. After we close an opportunity, we, we create the order in our ERP system. How should I integrate Salesforce orders? Well, we have a couple of different ways. Uh, if you currently have a process where you're taking, where you close the opportunity and then you're say, sending the opportunity details to your ERP for fulfillment, that's fine. What you could do then is bring the data back into Salesforce so that you have a place to expose the order and the order details to your, to your Salesforce users. And uh, so that's one way to do it. The other way you could do it is, as, uh, as Jason so, showed, uh, automatically, automatically convert uh, the order, uh, the sorry, the opportunity into an order, and then pass that back to your ERP system. So it, or, you know, it, it really depends. It's not really a, a recommended way, uh, but at the end of the day, what you want to do is bring the order information into Salesforce so that your sales and service users have access to the order, and, and that as the order progresses through its life cycle, they have uh, visibility into the different status uh, levels. And, uh, and then would it be exposed? Uh, you can tie other information to it, like payments and so forth, uh, so that you have that one place to see the full history of the order. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks so much, Tony. Uh, we only have time for a couple more questions, and so here's another one for Jason. Can Acromobile Payments connect to other standard or custom objects in Salesforce.com? Yes, it can. So when you install from App Exchange, um, it's going to be uh, initially connected to orders and the new invoice object that, that we've got as part of our package. Um, however, you can configure the solution to integrate with any other standard object like opportunities, accounts, and so on. Um, you can also connect it to any of your other uh, custom objects. So a lot of organizations have their own custom order objects um, that they may want to continue to use, and uh, we can help you uh, connect to those, or your um, Salesforce developers or SI could do that work for you as well. Great. Thanks, Jason. So another question for you. I already have CyberSource integrated with my e-commerce site. How would I use Acromobile Payments? Yes, so you can integrate with um, Acromobile Payments and Force.com. Uh, basically to bring in uh, any orders um, or your customer contact information to integrate with uh, between your e-commerce platform and uh, Acromobile uh, Payments as well as Force.com. Um, you could also even synchronize uh, your tokens um, so that uh, there's uh, the same payment information available um, through uh, different channels. Okay, we have uh, time for one more question, and this is for Paul. Is the product flexible to handle international customers and payment processes of different currency? Uh, great question, Jana. So, uh, yes, one of the great things about the um, CyberSource platform is that we actually provide global pa payment connectivity. So we can actually give you reach to about 190 countries around the world um, in terms of all the transaction locations that you could actually process from. So whether you want to be accepting you know, credit card, PayPal, or any of those other payment services that service those international markets, we can deliver you through a single API all the pa payment connectivity into all of those countries. So it absolutely is there to offer full international capability in terms of payments. A great answer. And uh, I think we're pretty much at the end of uh, our time here, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. You know, you can feel free to get in touch with us. There's contact information for you here. And we'd love to hear from you. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And everybody have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.